No matter how much I iron this shirt, I got it dry cleaned this time. It still looks wrinkled. Does it look wrinkled on camera? It's not wrinkled, okay? I put an effort into this. I have to wear it sometime. Hey, you guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're being very, very nice and I'm sending a lot of hugs and positivity to all of you. Hi, if you're new, welcome to the channel. I really hope you enjoy the content and if you do, please do consider subscribing. Today's video came in my mind because I was making a list of all of my five star reads to your ranking. I was making a list of all of the best books that I've read in 2023. And I I do want to make the video. They are the creme de la creme. They're so good. I do want to talk about them as much as possible because they deserve the hype. But what about the books that I have given 3.5 stars to? What about the books that I have given 4.5 stars to? Just because they did not get the last 0.5 stars, they, do, they don't deserve to be talked about at all as one of the best reads of the whole year. I can't do that, okay? There are so many books that I have read this year which were three and a half, four and a half stars, even three stars, and they were just so good that they stuck to my mind. But because stars are such a personal thing, I did not give them five stars because I did not feel like, but does that mean that the books were not good enough? Does that mean that they should not be read by you? No, not at all. They deserve their own video, just like five star books and six star books deserve their own video. Because of a few glitches here and there, because I was in a reading slump, because I was being moody, whatever the reason is, I just don't feel like they are five stars but they were amazing amazing books i have my coffee over here i have my water over here i have all of the books beside me and so let's talk about these awesome awesome books let's begin the video the first book that I want to talk about is a book that I have not actually even finished but I know for a fact it's going to be like a very highly rated book, book because I'm so in love with it and the book is You Again by Kate Goldbeck. This is the story of Ari and Josh who are meeting each other again and again here and there without even like trying to. They have not made any pact, nothing like that. They just keep crossing each other's path and they start out with an argument but then you see their journey with what actually happens between them. I'm not going to tell you what actually happens. Happens. I myself don't know the ending so why spoil it anything for you it's inspired by Harry Met Sally which I have not watched yet by the way I'm going to watch it after I finish reading this book but what this book did remind me of is Humtum which is a movie that I watched as a teenager I think I was too young to watch that movie but I did and it's one of my core memories it was one of my most favorite movies ever I think that is where my obsession with enemies to lovers started even though they're not true enemies and that is is what this book reminded me of and it took me back into my teenage it took me it gave me that nostalgic feeling but i will say that this book made me feel way warmer than that movie did because that movie is a rom-com so there are so many comedic parts to it this one did not really have a lot of comedy in it in it which made it very beautiful it was it's a very tender vulnerable story of these two people and how they just talk to each other and how comfortable they can be with each other but how they can also push each other's buttons and it is such a beautiful experience it's one of the best romances that i've read in 2023 and i've read it now I've read it in December. Next up, we have The Burnout by Sophie Kinsella, which is yet another a recent read. And I was shocked by how much I love this book. This is the story of Sasha, who is going through a burnout and she wants to do everything all at once. And then she goes into this freeze response. She goes into this place where she does not want to do anything at all anymore. And we see her journey of how she comes out of that burnout. And obviously there is a subplot of romance I'm saying subplot because yes obviously it played a big role but the romance thing was not even there till like 100 or 120 pages and I actually genuinely enjoyed that part because it did not make the book all about the romance of it and so the romance that was there because I was so connected to the characters it was gorgeous and I have cried two times not multiple but two times like crazy and I, it was unbelievable because I have never read anything by Sophie Kinsella because I always thought I don't like Sophie Kinsella it's not my cup of tea you can never just say no to anyone can you in the bookish world you never know what is going to surprise you and that is what happened with this book it surprised me it spoke to me the writing style is beautiful it reminded me of emily henry writing style made me feel cozy and comfortable and inspired i'm telling you you have to read this book especially if you have never read sophie kinsella or if you are a sophie kinsella fan even then just like read this book you're not gonna regret it if you're going through a burnout then though it's just like something else next up we have the dead romantics by ashley poston which is 
is a story of this one woman who was able to see ghosts and she's a ghost writer something really horrible happens and she goes to her hometown and she sees the ghost of her recent editor and she's like wait what is going on this is also said to be a romance because obviously romantics is in the title but i think it is way more than that i think romance in this also was more of a subplot because it was more the story of the main female character florence her name is florence day and it is beautiful it is so nice yet again because i was so connected to the characters the romance was also beautiful but just the way this book deals with pain and loss so nice and so cozy even though there are themes of magic it was not difficult at all to understand so i think they called it paranormal romance or magical realism whatever you want to call it i just want to say that the characters are beautiful and the emotions are powerful so you must read this book all three of them by the way are beginner friendly next is a book that i am not for the life of me able to take out of my brain and i'm just thinking to myself why on earth have I rated it four stars if it is so good or 4.5 if it is so good if I'm not able to stop thinking about it but then when I actually think about the story I'm like not five stars you know but still it's it's just like that you know and the book is My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine I can already see why people won't like this book I can already see why it's sort of like a hyped book but people will say it's not worth the hype and I already know people who do not like the ending so I get all of that but it is one of the best rom-com that I have read this year and I have read many rom-coms this year there is comedy and there is romance and a lot of times when there is comedy in a book I don't laugh out loud I did with this book it is a story of this obviously like this woman whose roommate is a vampire but this vampire you would think is like broody and all of that which you usually see in series and even other books like i remember twilight edward cullen was the broodiest person ever and all of the vampires in twilight so broody the originals klaus and all vampire diaries stefan and all they're all so broody and like just like sulking and all of that all the time Frederick j fitzwilliam the best vampire ever adorable no sign of broodiness the best gentleman i really want him there's this old school love going on over here because of him because he's such an old vampire and it is glorious it, glorious it is amazing i will never be able to forget this book it is that good so if you are like me you must read this book once again very easy for beginners though it does have spice so no for teenagers <laughs> next we have love on the brain by ali hazelwood which again is not meant for teenagers i'm sorry though the spice was not really that much but still and this is the story of this main character who is in stem who is in science who was invited i think by nasa to build this particular helmet for astronauts and things like that basically make this really scientific equipment and over there she meets her nemesis and it's again a rivals to lovers sort of a story love story the main female character was quite annoying when it like for my preference but the reason i'm recommending it so highly is because first of all levi is my not book boyfriend he's my book husband like i really want to marry him secondly nobody writes men book boyfriends book husbands like ali hazelwood you cannot miss out on that they're a very nice goofy time they're not gonna completely change your life okay you're not gonna be like oh my god i've never read something like this ever in my life before you can't get serious with it okay these are not serious reads you're supposed to have fun with them and if you do decide to have fun with them oh my god the fun you'll have with it next we have one true loves by taylor jenkins read which i think that when i made the video about this book i gave it a five stars but i've read two books by taylor jenkins read now which is seven husbands of evelyn hugo and uh, carrie soto is back and after reading both of the books i have come to a conclusion that this one is not a five stars it's like 4.5 four stars because it was just not as good like i've already read what is the best you know by her i still have daisy jones and Essex. i have malibu rising but that does not mean it is one of the best books that i read this entire year it's the story of emma who loses her husband her husband dies in a helicopter crash and she's trying to move on from it so the way it captures grief and the way you move on it is so beautiful and then she's kind of falling in love with this other guy but then you come to know that the husband didn't actually die he has come back and you would think that there's so much drama so it's going to be funny and things like that but it's not it's so so realistic i don't know if it's realistic actually because i've never been in such a situation it feels so real and it's so beautiful and the whole taylor jenkins read magic does exist in this too the way she describes all the feeling this was love triangle done 
in the best way ever. Next we have History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera which yet again I think I gave it 5 stars but I think it's a 4.5 stars now that I think about it. All I know is that I have not talked about this book enough and this is the story of Griffin who has lost Theo, the first love of his life and he is reminiscing their past and he is dealing with the grief in the present and both those timelines are going on and you read everything how it started in the past and how he's dealing with the grief in the present and it is such a beautiful story made me cry so many times I still don't know why I won't give it a five stars it just did not give me that feeling but such a beautiful book if you have read they both die at the end by adam silvera because it was just so popular and you're like oh it's not that good like what was the hype about blah, blah, blah. read this one because this one does not have sort of a dystopian or whatever concept going on it is raw and i can say that i love adam silvera's writing style next we have fake dates and moon cakes by Cher lee this is the story wait in this also is, is there theo yeah this is wow two theos we have here this is the story of the my book just fell. This is the story of Dylan who is trying to save his shop and so he enters a mooncake competition making a mooncake making mooncakes competition but on the way can you see the book yeah but while he's doing all of these things he gets distracted by this hotshot Theo who is so nice and they have to fake date for some reason so the book is called fake dates and mooncakes while both the characters in the romance is really cute in the beginning because Dylan the guy is rich and hot and so it just feels like oh you look at them and you're just swayed and it's swoony as you read ahead it becomes cute and vulnerable and so so good and the way this book describes food so good so good it's such a must read next up we have it happened one summer by tessa bailey which is not a five star but one of the best books that i have read by tessa bailey it's an opposites attract small town romance and I have not read Opposites Attract small town romance like this. I have read Secretly Yours, which is also Grumpy X Sunshine, but it's just not as good as this one. The captain is so swony. Pippa, who is spoiled in the beginning, is such an adorable character as you move ahead. You would expect that because Pippa is so spoiled and she does not know things and she's a little bit immature and things like that, she won't be self-aware and she won't know what she thinks about her own feelings. But that was not the case. Pippa was very forthcoming. She was very self-aware of her feelings and I loved that. So when you, when you love both the characters in a romance, the romance itself becomes so, so good. This is a highly spicy book. So if you're looking for spice, but also vulnerability and romance and emotional depth. This is your book. I love it. The last romance we have is Beach Read by Emily Henry. The reason this was not a five stars for me is because of the miscommunication trope that is there and also because of the main female character who is actually initiating the miscommunication trope. And I'm just like, shut up. That does not mean that it did not have all of the goodness of the Emily Henry writing and Emily Henry story, the Emily Henry romance and the Emily Henry relatability of the characters and the Emily Henry just talking about even other things in a way that makes you realize things about your own life. It was amazing. I had such a good time and I love the main male character in this book too. The main female character only a little bit here and there. It was annoying. But apart from that, it was nice. It is nice. It was the story. It Okay, I just need to take a pause. It is the story of two authors who are sort of like in a slum, but they both have to write a book. And so they have decided to help each other. So you see what happens with that. Next, we come to books that have no particular genre in my mind. And the first book is The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. This book is a story of the reading list, which is getting passed on from person to person. And it has multiple POVs in it. And it is such a beautiful book because it makes you realize how fiction books can change your life. I think I recommend it to literally every single person in the world, whether you're a reader, whether you're a non-fiction reader, whatever it is, this is such an important book because no other book has shown me how important fiction books can be the way this book has. It's just so good and the characters are so amazing and it has that Indian setting even though it is not set in India. It has so many relatable things like dal chawal and all. It's just so good. The mixture is amazing and I love Mukesh. Even though it is thick and big and sort of like an odd size of a book and it's really pretty, it's very very easy to read. It's highly recommended. The next is Girl Goddess Queen by Bea Fitzgerald. Another thick ass book that you can read because it is so so easy to read and if you want to get into Greek mythology then this is definitely your book. This is the story of Persephone. Persephone? Pers 
yeah who is popular for the fact that hades actually pulled her into the underworld but when you read this book you realize that she was not pulled into the underworld she chose to go over there she jumped into the underworld she jumped in hell and there we have hades who is the god of underworld so you see her journey from how she goes from a girl to a goddess to a queen but also there is a subplot of romance between hades and persephone now persephone persephone is also the goddess of spring there's this opposite attract going on where hades is the god of death and is so nice on hades oh hades hades is so good i love hades everywhere hades is the love of my life talking about hades hades is the god of the underworld in greek mythology but then we have lilith which is the story of lilith who is the first woman in the whole world but she was casted out because she did not give in to the servitude of adam who was the first man of the world she had the fruit of the tree of knowledge and she knows that uh, she knows what her power is and she knows what she deserves and she knows what equality is and she's like i'm not gonna give in to you you know like shut up and get lost when she is cast out she meets samael who is the hades the lucifer whatever you call him in this book the devil and he's also cast out and it's so nice that subplot of romance going on in this also but also this is fantasy i mean that's what i am calling it it's a fantasy book and just the way lily lily just the voice of lilith is so powerful and the matter of fact way in which she talks how equality is just such an obvious thing and other people who have not had the fruit from the tree of knowledge are just like wait what is she talking about that is so realistic that's what happens even now she's like the first badass of the world and i love it and talking about fantasy we also have fourth wing wing by rebecca yaros which i have not given five stars i think i gave it whoa this copy always gets me i think i've given it four stars it was such an amazing book it's the story of violet who is not built to be in the fourth wing of this war college which is all about dragons and killing people and wars basically she wants to be in the scribe quadrant which is about libraries and archives and saving history but her mother forces her in to go to the fourth wing and now we see how she survives over there this is a fantasy romance so it also has a subplot of romance in it but i think it's a very big plot when it comes to this book the fantasy political side is very low in this book which i think is higher in the next book iron flame it was so fast paced the dragons are literally adorable i was literally on my feet and the romance is so sizzling so hot so amazing zayden is so hot there were so many amazing things about the book and it's also very easy to read so if you're a beginner you can read it even if it is such a big book next we come to all of the mystery thrillers first we have the house across the lake by riley sager which i still think about it here and there sometimes it just hits that i read this book and how amazing it was it is a story of this woman who lives across the lake and she's staring into the house across the lake and she's seeing this couple who is living out her dream life written in a very straightforward to the point airtight manner it's so easy to read you don't get lulled out or bored anywhere at all and the ending like the last 100 pages it punches you with so many plot twists you'll be like i've never read so many good plot twists in my life the reason i did not give this a five star was because there's just this element that happens in the end which i am not a fan of and i can't even talk about it and tell you that this is what happened so you are prepared for it so yeah i don't give it five stars for that reason i really think that this is that sort of book that you can gamble with like there are books where i'm like i don't think people everybody in the world will like it and so i don't recommend it but then there are books which i think that some people will like it and some people won't but it's definitely worth spending your money and time on and this is one of those books next up we have the maid by nita pro this is the story of molly the maid who likes everything clean and nice and she's very good at her job but one day she finds the dead body of mr black in the hotel and she does not know what to do and so we see her cleaning up this mess too this can also be known as a cozy mystery because it's not graphic it is not slasher and it has great characters and it's actually more than a mystery next we have the housemaid by freda mcfadden which i have given i think 3.5 or 4 stars even the locked door by freda mcfadden i think i give it 3.5 stars all freda mcfadden books are actually really really good given i would suggest do not read the blurb of the book because the book is so short and the blurb is written in a way where half of the book is just given away you will not feel the build up happening properly you will not enjoy the build up because of the way the blurb is written and so don't read the blurb so if you want a snacky 
very easy to read fast paced thriller this is your book if you have never read thrillers before you will actually enjoy it way more because then it will probably be unpredictable for you but even if you do predict what the ending is i just think that it's a very enjoyable read as a whole it is so good next we have five survive by holly jackson which is the story of six friends who are stuck in an rv and they're going from one place to another and first they think that it is only happening to them because something like their tires are punctured but soon there is a sniper and there are shots being fired and they're just stuck there for the whole night it has such an adorable main character red i love her so much and holly jackson is the author of the good girl's guide to mother Mo I can never say murder properly. Murder series and unwantedly my brain did compare both the books and so I just knew that this is not a five star but that did not mean at all that when you don't compare it to the Good Girls Guide to Murder series it is not an amazing amazing book. So if you're looking for a good YA thriller this is your book kept me at the edge of my seat. The plot twist was amazing. It was just a little bit underdeveloped but that's just how I feel about it. If you want a very good time like a very fast paced thriller this is your book the plot twist awesome in the end we have two books by lisa jewel the family upstairs by lisa jewel and none of this is true by lisa jewel both of these books i think i gave four four and a half stars because of certain themes discussed in this book but it was so so good especially the family upstairs and now actually no both books they were so so good when you start reading lisa jewel books you don't really know what is going on there'll be multiple povs and multiple timelines at the same time but even then if you're a beginner you can still read it because it all does tie up together and is so so good this is the story of this one house that house two families but then one day a baby is found crying and then there are three dead bodies in the kitchen none of this is true is the story of this one woman who shares her birthday with this other woman alex and so they meet together blah 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 and they talk to each other and josie or hosey josie is like you know what you should tell me you should uh post me as a guest on your podcast because i'm gonna make big changes to my life so you should just like really listen listen to it you should just hear me out alex is like okay and so they start with this podcast but as you move on you see what actually happened oh so crazy the best things about lisa jewel books are the blurbs which do not give away anything when you're reading the book it is just so much more than what the blurb is and i love that so much and i love how it all comes together and i love the ending of each book i love these books so much and with that i think we come towards the end of this video these are the few three to four star books which i think are so so good that you must give them a shot and that is it i'll see you guys again very very soon